Welcome everybody to the Good Kraken Show. This is episode 144, <laughs> and I am your host, Devin Stanford, aka Brevin the Dude. And I am joined here today by my little cherry blossom, the one and only Garrick B. Eaton. How you doing, man? Uh a little sleepy, a little sleepy. Got a little bit of a late start to my day today. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh, you know, but we're gonna talk about some DC stuff today, and I'm actually a little intrigued mm -hmm. because uh because I don't know if you guys remember, but like <laughs> earlier this week and last week, Warner Brothers like blew up the like broke the internet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty really good. Uh, yeah, so like they've been they've been uh, so there's things to discuss, I think. But uh dude, I'm a sleepy boy today. Like I just like really started work again like for the first time and since may like mm -hmm. yesterday who the fuck starts a school year on a friday by the way like who made okay, yeah, that yeah, that's call? Weird. apparently that's your school weird. district <laughs> oh dude D to just to make that even it was a half day was it for like, students on top of that for, really or what mm -hmm. does not just don't come to school what? Oh, I bet you half of this, dude. I bet you like the we'll have like double our numbers on Monday because like because most people probably didn't show up because it's a half day on a Friday, like the first day of school. Get out of here, dude. It's whack. It's dumb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So, so like dumb. I like that so was dumb. that was that was kind of my like so my dumb. introduction to like the new school year. Uh, mm -hmm. like I'm in a brand new I'm in a brand new school and uh, yeah, adjusting to things. So like I had to actually like wake up an adult yesterday which i haven't had to do in a couple of months so mm -hmm. yeah love that for you love that for you we are also joined here today by twitch.tv's very own dj what's up guys i am excited to talk about all the dc stuff you know i am being chilling also you know well, not a late start to my day. I just didn't sleep well. So, like, I'm as soon as this show's over, as soon as we cut the cameras, I'm passing out in this chair. Uh, <laughs> well, drink, sleep. drink some like, coffee or a cola or something, man. <laughs> Somebody go get this boy. Or you get some cola. rogue energy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Some rogue energy. Um, but, but, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, school starts for me next Monday. So, I'll have to wake up and be a student. And I haven't thought about that in a long time mm -hmm. uh, so uh my first class is at 9 30 so i gotta wake up at like oh, that's eight not horrible. That's not bad, it's not though. horrible but like if i'm a i commute so like you know i have to wake up a little bit earlier and it takes me like about an hour to like really wake up and like get started to my day so i don't feel bad um, for you at all yeah. I, I wait. I don't feel bad. With don't my pity job, me. I wake up at you chose your schedule. In the morning. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You have night classes too. I have a night class every Monday and Wednesday, and so Mondays it's six to nine, and then Wednesday is four to seven. Mm -hmm. So I go to I take two classes in the morning, and then like I go home and I have to go back to campus. To oh, dude, that would kill it for me like all of my motivation would just leave me in but in like in between those classes like, when, I, when i was in school dude i literally like I, I i was there and like even if i had like a three hour gap in between like i stayed on campus because i was just yeah. like if i leave i'm not coming back <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'll probably hit me that'll probably hit me soon because like i feel like i might not just go back if if i go home so Dude, that's like it's a real feeling. How far into it are you? Like, are you near the end of your like your your degree or your major? Yeah, like so so um because this one class I'm I'm not gonna graduate on time, but hopefully by next summer I'm finished. Mm. So so you know I'll go through these next two, and then like take like uh the summer class, two summer classes, and then I'm I'm like done for get my degree, and you know it's GG go next uh. You know, on to the next thing. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 
Well, let me tell you, life is all about moving on to the next things. But today we are talking about the days being gone, falling in the red and our DCEU predictions and much, much more. Because this is the Good Kraken podcast, your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news, reviews and discussions that you want to hear live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 12 p.m. If you're riding this wave, you can head on over to our Discord where you can submit questions and topics to the show, get exclusive content, and have early access to episodes before they go live on podcast and video services across the digital sea. Yarg. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. But if you've emptied your pockets for the latest and greatest in entertainment, that is totally fine. You can watch us record the show live right here at twitch.tv forward slash good show. If you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime, and we would love for you to give that to us to help us keep pushing out content for all of you listening or watching at home. But you can also support us by going to our YouTube channel, clicking that beautiful bell and big red button, or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken, Explanation Point, and leaving a review there. Review. Reviews. Get it! What? What? We got some captain's artists. Sorry for the delay, guys, on um, the shipwreck show. It'll be out live tomorrow morning. That's right. Should be out by 8 a.m. tomorrow on Monday. I mean, Sunday. I get my days mixed up. I haven't worked in a while. It's been like a month. <laughs> it is like that. If you, yeah. I feel like if you're not like working or doing or going to school, like it's really easy to be like, what day is it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it looks like my shoulder's fine. It's still not. I still just have more because, doctor's like, just appointments. Just because you're not like in a sling doesn't mean like yeah. it feels good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh what year is it? But I, I heard that shipwreck show got real wild. I heard Ernell got a little tipsy on that show. And uh Dude, homie forgot to read how to he like he forgot how to intro his own show. Been there. <laughs> RIP. <laughs> RIP. chat, please. <laughs> um, Doubt. So, uh, but other than that, yeah, check out that episode. It'll be live tomorrow on Sunday at 8 a.m. If you're listening to this, you're it's probably out the same time as this. <laughs> um, True, probably. Mm-hmm. Garrick, can you can you tell the people what we got going on here next? Absolutely. We are moving into our first segment today, which is our new segment, The Helm. And uh, would you like me to take uh, our first story there? Absolutely. All right. right. Well, here to chat my hat from the very beginning of my day. Sony is working on a Days Gone movie, and this is coming from Logan Plant at IGN. Reported by Deadline, Sony PlayStation Productions is apparently developing the film with an adaptation from X-Men First Class story developer Sheldon Turner. The movie will be produced by Vendetta Productions and PlayStation Productions. Released in 2019, Days Gone is an open-world action-adventure game set in the post-apocalyptic Pacific Northwest. The game stars Deacon St. John, a motorcycle-riding bounty hunter fighting to survive against the Freakers, zombie-like creatures that frequently attack in hordes. Deacon is also spends much of the game searching for the long-lost love of his life. According to the report, the movie will be a love ballad to motorcycle movies, uh, the bike being Deacon's sole form of transportation, uh, which is true for the game as well. The producers are currently eyeing Outlander star Sam Hugan to play Deacon St. John. The actor also appeared in The Spy Who Dumped Me, Bloodshot, and the upcoming Everest movie. Uh, the game was motion capped. The game was motion capped. Why are you not even considering Sam? Yeah. Were like a hundred per like, like, I don't, I don't understand. Also this whole news story just ir- I like, I, I, I saw this news story yesterday and it pissed me off then too. Yeah. I'm still very, very irritated about it. Ben studios made this game. Great studio. I personally love days gone. Love this game. Like I'm in love with this game. One of the best zombie games out there. Not as good as Dying Light. Dying Light's the best zombie game ever made. But uh, and 
so like it's just like it's a really good game the story is pretty great and like i understand the people like the gripes that people have most people's complaints were like that uh deacon saint john was kind of flat uh as a protagonist and the first mm-hmm. act of the game was pretty weak which uh was true it was a little slower in the first act lots of world world building stuff and uh they also <clears throat> the shooting mechanics in game, like for a third person shooter, like action adventure weren't the tightest could have been a little bit better, but like it didn't hamper like the overall gameplay or anything like that. And like, I ended up like, like I could even like confidently now I would say like, I give this game an eight five. Like I absolutely love this game, but Ben studios in 2020 went to Sony and proposed the sequel game, which they did set up in the first title and proposed the sequel game to this and said no. Mm. But they still think it's, which I don't understand because a film's going to cost more than a sequel video game is. Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll probably out margin it by at least like 30 or 40,000 mm. just because of the way, like the budgeting is going to work. And in like, uh, a lot of that will depend on, you know, like the studios. They like I don't I'm, I'm not familiar with uh with Vendetta Productions and like what films they've worked on. But I mean, X-Men First Class like that. That's like a that's a triple A film. You know, that's a blockbuster. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and like the thing is, it's like Sam Witwer does more than just voice acting and motion cap work. Like he's an actual actor. Like he's he's been on like several TV shows. I think he still acts like he's like uh and, like he's been in pretty recent stuff. Well, it's, uh, so like it, it was just interesting to see to me that like that w- he wasn't like their immediate consideration when like I know there's been talks about like using uh, Cal Kestis in oh. like Star Wars stuff, who's also a motion cap character. And like I've n- everyone's just like, if it's not Cameron Monaghan, like we riot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so like while like I don't know, like, it, it just seemed like a biz- like a bizarre take. Like they still think it's worth some money. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making a movie, but I don't understand why this seemed like the appropriate move over a sequel game. Well, it's because it's Sony and they never make good <laughs> movie choices. Yeah. <laughs> recently, <Fucking> whack, dude. <laughs> I'd say at least in the last five years, their, their cinematography choices they've made have not been choice at uh, all. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. And it's just be- like, they're just trying to piggyback off, like regardless of like our personal feelings toward the film, like, Uncharted was still considered a box office success, which is why they're now trying to push for another adaptation. And this one fits the bill of what people are into right now. Uh, the tone of films that are currently being released, like because this is going to be something that's going to be way darker mm-hmm. than because this is like a t- this is like a this is like a an, a, a 17, like a, a rated 17 game. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. like it's going to be it's going to be like a little deeper into it than, you know, like than what uncharted would be i don't know like you can tell like they're just trying to push something that fits like the kind of movies that people have been seeing in like the last couple of years and th- that feels like the only reason they're doing that. I, it, the whole thing boggles my fucking mind yeah yeah no it's um it's interesting i i really just like you said i wish they would just bring back the mocap actors who they literally made the characters look like to to play the characters in yeah it's like it's not movie. just the voice you in know, the movements like you you, like you actually use this person's likeness for the character yeah they, yeah. they did like, the same thing sense. with uh the last of us for um for the hbo series but i don't think they used the likeness of those actors who did the voicing see so. they didn't mm-hmm. but i but like when you see the screenshots of who they chose to play those characters in costume on set it looks great in context like mm-hmm. they look like yeah. they're embodying like the essence of the character but like when you are already like you're already going so far as to use a large portion of your budget to motion cap and use the likeness of a person why not just give that familiarity like because like I would rather you do that. Like, give me the character and like, give me that level of fan service rather than doing some bullshit thing where you're just like, by the way, this is a prequel movie, Uncharted, cough, cough. uh, But we're going to use direct translation one to one scenes from the second video game. Mm. Like, don't do that. (laughs) That's not what that that makes fans upset. But like, but when you have perfect opportunities to like 
to consider like the people that actually played the freaking character. And you're just like, nah, we'll find somebody better. Like, you guys are goofing. And then use that character as a cameo. Yeah, which feels like an insult more often than not. You're just like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's it's just uh, I guess we're just going to have to see how it turns out. Yeah, we'll see. I'm 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 sorry. I do have like a secret kind of like wish for this. Yeah. I'm ho- I'm hoping that like over the pandemic, like Ben Studios was like able to like revise their pitch, mm-hmm. and like we're gonna get when they announce the video, like when they when we get like the first trailer for the film, I'll shit if they were just like, oh by the way, we're doing the second game now, oh, like yeah. that Ooh. would like tell me that would not just be the most unreal like marketing strategy for them. Do, do you think? Do you think? the success of this movie is going to like be the baseline if if the the second installment I think it could gets get a sequel greenlit yeah. yeah yeah i think this yeah. i i think they're they're doing this is just like well if, the, if like if we can get an, another bundle out of this maybe we'll reconsider your pitch for that second game mm-hmm. because there's like there's like a true ending to the game that you can unlock too and like the a secret cut scene that like totally sets up like a sequel. Mm-hmm. If you guys have PlayStations, mm-hmm. you got to play that shit. It's yeah, great. Yeah, I game, haven't played it yet, but it's on uh, PC now too. Even yeah, yeah, I haven't played yeah, it yet. Yeah. I, I, we gotta I, check you know, it I bought this game for my brother for Christmas like a couple of years ago. So he he said he really liked it. So dude, I know liked it. Didn't feel bad about it at all. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. good. Yeah, I remember dude, it, like all you're the gonna hype. you're gonna be real familiar with the settings too because it it's it literally looks like Oregon because it is. Yeah, if they don't film this movie in Oregon, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably. I wonder where they would film it. If they could on location would be the best. Like they could probably we'll get away with in someplace Bend. in Canada. Just go to Bend, to, which I honestly I think it is like an Eastern Oregon yeah. game. Yeah. It, so they could get yeah. away with yeah just go film it and that. bend and then and then that way you can have the studio like help with the movie too with the writing and and direction and everything to make sure things work out oh, well they better be involved yeah because that's that's what they're doing with the last of us show is i know that neil Druckmann is helping write the yes. script and everything so mm-hmm. i i really hope they do something similar with this i mean they didn't say they are, so it kind of leads me to believe that they're not. But I'm hoping that can be the case. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see. I don't I don't know. I, like I follow Ben Studios on Twitter, so I'm gonna keep an eye on. Uh, I'll mm-hmm. keep an eye on it to see because I know they're they're hiring and they're working on projects. We just don't know what right now. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, there it is, guys. We are going to be getting a Days Gone movie. It is started with production now. Um, DJ. Could you take this next story for us? I got you, brother. So, Regal Cinema's owner, Cineworld, reportedly to declare bankruptcy. This comes from Courtney Krupkowski at Screen Rant. Uh, It's no secret that movie theaters have struggled to retain audiences since the COVID-19 pandemic forced them to close their doors. With many studios opting to release their content on streaming platforms in lieu of a theatrical release... There have been limited opportunities for theaters to recover from the financial woes of the pandemic. While some releases such as Top Gun Maverick have broken box office records, this has mostly been the exception to the rule for theaters, and now they are feeling the effects of it. Despite modest recovery in attendance, this has apparently not been enough to keep the company afloat. Reportedly, Cineworld has employed the help of Kirkland and LS LLP and consultants from Alex Partners in the bankruptcy process. Cineworld currently operates 751 locations around the world, containing more than 9,000 screens. Currently, uh, Cineworld's biggest competitor, AMC Entertainment Holdings Incorporated, has also seen a dramatic decrease in in attendance and ticket sales since the pandemic. However, the group spent $25 million on an advertising campaign with actress Nicole Kidman in order to bring in viewership. The deal was a massive success for the company with Kidman's ads quickly becoming pop culture sensation with internet parodies, memes, and more causing a frenzy on social media. A similar approach might be a smart move for Cineworld as they attempt to get back into the game, though AMC has already confirmed Kidman for another year as spokesperson due to her high demand. While no official word on whether Cineworld will close its properties doors for good, 
Hopefully, the bankruptcy process runs smoothly and result in a future for Regal Cinemas. So, this is death of movie theaters, eh? Like, uh, this is kind of... It feels like it's... I feel like we're just kind of weeding out the crappier theaters at this point. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I don't know about you guys, uh, but like where I live, we don't have Regal Cinema anymore. They'll I think there's like yeah. maybe one or two. And like for the most part, uh, they've closed down um, I, a lot of a lot of our our stuff is Cinemark. We have Cinemark for almost everything Same. around here. Same. And yeah, over see, here, I know it, I think I think AMC. the only. The only regal cinemas I was aware of back in Oregon was Clackamas Town Center, Oregon City, right? Like that was no that was Clackamas it. Town Center is mm-hmm. is a Cinemark. Um, Clackamas Town Center. Oh, is, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Oregon City was a regal, right? I think like so. A regal eight or some shit. Yeah, like yeah. It was, I think <laughs> it's there's there's that there's that one and there's one in Tigard that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. See, like they're not like a. I, I'm, I don't know. And maybe they're more of an East Coast theater. I'm not. They might be 100 percent sure. But like, I'm not super familiar with them. But like Cinemark, like and then uh, Cinemark's like the biggest thing around here. And then we have uh, a few AMC theaters, too. Yeah, we don't have AMC yeah. out here. Actually, I think we have yeah. one in Beaverton. Now that I think about it, they were the first they were the first theaters around here that like adapted, adopted, excuse me, uh, like the reclining seats. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which I think that I think they kind of started that trend. But uh I don't know. Like it's interesting because like I haven't heard any like financial struggles, like especially as like since we're kind of coming to like the end, air quote, of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. you know, like uh I, I I go to Cinemark regularly now. Um I've been to lots of like pretty full movies uh like over the summer and stuff, you know. So like I, I, I think it just depends on like your location and, and the theaters like holy because like i don't yeah. like i haven't seen a regal movie theater myself in a long time yeah i we don't have any down here that not that i know of uh we have uh of course amc amc is kind of like the main movie theater like across the board around down here and and we have uh one cinemark like right it's like 20 minutes away from me and um, we have like local theaters like this is a local theater called uh, Celebrity Theaters, like, uh, locally owned and operated. And they have the reclining like seats and stuff. But all our AMCs over here, they, they don't. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah. And we have and we also have movie tavern. I don't know if you guys have a, a movie tavern. It's like those or uh, the movie theaters that like. Uh, so I guess that's also locally owned and operated. Uh, it's like do they do like the out of cycle movies? No, no, no. This movie tavern is like uh, the the movie theaters that they that serve food. Also oh, have oh we have like we serve. have like equivalents of those. Yeah, mm, yeah so we, we have, have like down too. here it's called movie tavern. We have like two of them um, down here. So okay, yeah. See, yeah. like the biggest one, Cinemark's are definitely our biggest one, and then I would say like in my area, probably Megaplex. Megaplex theaters. We have yeah, we don't have Megaplex those. over here. Yeah. Oregon, mm-hmm. Oregon is pretty much like ruled by cinemark and century oh yeah century theaters i forgot about them cinemark and century are the same thing though yeah yeah century well century is like a huge huge one in california Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think they're like the biggest like theater in california actually like they're everywhere yeah yeah well guys you know what's also pretty huge death stranding is coming to pc game pass next week This is coming from Michael McWitter over at Polygon. The world's first Strand game will be available to subscribers starting on August 23rd. The Windows PC version of Death Stranding has been available since July 2020, and the Game Pass release appears to be the original base version of the game, not the 2022 Director's Cut re-release. But the PC version for Game Pass includes ultra-wide monitor support, photo mode, high frame rate, and crossover content from some very well-known franchises. According to 505 Games, the PC Game Pass version of Death Stranding will also include Xbox achievements. According to the achievement tracking website True Achievements, PC Game Pass costs about $9.99 per month and includes access to hundreds of high-quality PC games as part of the subscription service that Microsoft spun out of Xbox Game Pass. 
Death Stranding was originally released on PlayStation 4 in November 2019 to a critical acclaim. The game was nominated for multiple game developers Choice, Dice, and BAFTA awards. Much of Death Stranding's gameplay is centered around Sam Bridges, a delivery man, as he treks across a destroyed version of the United States to reconnect it via a network, something akin to the internet, while all while meeting up with a supporting cast that includes some of creator Hideo Kojima's favorite famous people. Kojima and Microsoft announced earlier this year that Kojima Productions and Xbox Game Studios are working on a new mystery project. Kojima described the collaboration as a, quote, completely new game, end quote. And no one that Kojima himself and knowing Kojima himself has always wanted to make. Kojima Productions, a new game, will utilize Microsoft's cloud gaming technology. Ooh. So, last time that we heard about Microsoft's cloud gaming technology was for Crackdown 3. Oh. And that didn't turn out well. I do want to I do want to point that sucked. out. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So, I do want to point that out. Like Terry Crews. Yeah, I do yeah. love me some Terry Crews, but he Terry not even that, he could that carry stinker. that. He's not that always stinker, in the best yeah. pieces of content either. You know, <laughs> Brooklyn Nine Nine is we definitely keep letting his best Terry Crews yeah. down. Like we we like they keep letting Terry Crews down. Yeah, like, that, you know what that, I mean? that man underutilized needs, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes overutilized. You ever see the Expendables? <laughs> Look, man, I like his character. In I think I think the Expendables is just overutilized, but hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think this is cool. Uh, this definitely um opens up the game to a whole new audience. You know, there's probably people who were interested in the game that played on PC but didn't want to spend the money on it. I bought the director's yeah. cut version. I will say that. <laughs> uh, but uh, now if you have Game Pass, it's just there for you to play. Um, this game is very beautiful, beautiful. I opened it up on my PC and it's probably one of the prettiest looking games on PC. Like not even going to joke, even with all the brown and the grays, it's just the way that the water looks and everything. Look at the water. Yeah. Oh it, my God. The water is actually alive water, and it's going to eat water. you and swallow you. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's actually a pretty cool game. I've only put a few hours into it so far. Um, but that was before. the first half of the game is a slow burn. It's yeah, a slow burn. Like you like it doesn't. I think there's like 14 or 15 chapters and I think it doesn't really like pick up until like seven. Yeah. Yeah. I I it's it's on my list of games to play and I'm probably going to dive into it. I just like I get so overwhelmed sometimes with open world games with, you know, traveling by foot and stuff like that. Oh, Dude, 100 percent or uh, yeah. just any game where like you can you have the potential to open the game and like the map is just like riddled with stuff to do and you're just like i call it assassin's creed syndrome mm -hmm. yeah but like and so like you open the map and it's just like littered with icons and like you're just like that just gave me like full-blown anxiety <laughs> like yeah. whoa yeah and like i, I feel, feel like death stranding like especially because like the nature of the game is literally you like precariously like carrying like a stack of boxes from one place to another and dealing with a bunch of hazards along the way like it adds to the stress level so like it's a good game it really is it's just like it's just it's just a it's a wholly unique experience like i you i literally can't compare it to another game you can't like mm -hmm. it's just death stranding it's just death strand yeah. it is a strand type game it truly is first. We're making fun of the, yeah world's first strand game I mean, I, I, you know, I was, I was not gonna lie. I was the one clowning on Death Stranding, you know, before it released and even after it did. Uh, but, you know, watching people play it, watching some of my uh, close friends play it and, and uh, their reactions to it. Um, I, you know, it, it's piqued my interest. You know, I love Hideo Kojima. I love Metal Gear. I fucking love those games. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, now I can probably try Death Stranding, you know, be a part of the 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 many who've tried the world's first strand type game mm -hmm. um by the yeah. way this article is the first time i've ever heard the phrase strand game same, I mean, same. yeah <laughs> so just saying yeah. but uh and the game's been out yeah. for two years 
but hey. Three, right? Three years, because it came out three. in 2019. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, it was a, 2020 is when the PC version came out. But mm-hmm. but those last few lines in that in that article, like Hideo Kojima is cooking up something crazy, it sounds like. Like, if they're bringing back that cloud gaming technology, like, just for this game, and, like, maybe well, you some, know- like games after, but, like... Mm-hmm. Maybe this will be like the start. Like this is the catalyst, right? This he's is gonna, the, re, he's the gonna restart, the rekindling it of that in a, in a unique way. Like because it's yeah. because it's Kojima, he's gonna implement it in he, a unique yeah, way. Yeah, I'm like I'm ex- I'm I'm excited. I'm like whoa, you know, because I thought maybe he was maybe he's in the back like cooking like another like PT like Silent Hill like you know Silent Hill. You can't like use that name, but like nope. some PT completely new experience. No, it's yeah, completely yeah. new. Completely I hope it's a horror game. game. I hope it's a horror game. Like I really it's probably do. Probably a horror game, dude. Oh. When you get deeper into Death Stranding, it starts to go that way. Yeah, I hope it's yeah. a horror game. Think, and because like he said, it's a it's something he's always wanted to make. And mm-hmm. so like, mm-hmm. I just know for a fact this is like his child. Like this this game is his child. And I got he's a question. Unleash his child onto us. What's up? Do you do you guys think he's gonna utilize more celebrities too? And do oh, you th- for sure. Do you oh think? dude absolutely dude, he's literally the, he's yeah. a rock star yeah he's a rock star bro is gonna Everybody be a part of this do you think del toro is gonna Ooh. be a part of this again because he is in death stranding he, he's got he got dude. mads mickelson he's got norman reedus del toro in death stranding. norman reedus is definitely coming back norman, norman reedus. reedus is a household name dude like yeah. he, was, he became Kojima. a household name because of the walking dead like you, i can't there's no way you can't tell me that there was not a like at least I would say probably twenty percent of the individuals that bought that game did it just because he was the protagonist Norman of the Reed, game. Yeah. Yeah. Norman Reed is definitely coming back. Yeah. Um yeah. onto this. Whatever it is, it could be like yeah, like not even related to Dead mm-hmm. Stranding or anything. He's coming back for sure. Oh well what's up, um, Shark? Welcome in. Welcome in. Um Garrick, uh I just had something come up. Can you read this last story? I'll be right back. Yes, yes, I Thank surely you. can. All right, so we are going to move on to our last little news story here. Lord of the Rings Embracer Group buys the rights to make games, movies, and more. And this is coming from Ryan Dinsdale at IGN. Embracer has acquired Middle Earth Enterprises from the Zalzent Company. Uh, And with its worldwide, worldwide rights to motion pictures, video games, board games, merchandising, theme parks, and stage productions relating to the writings of J.R.R. Tolkien, as well as matching rights in literary works works authorized by the Tolkien Estate and HarperCollins. The majority of the Lord of the Rings media to be released in the last few decades is ultimately owned by Middle Earth Enterprises, with aspects being licensed out for the creations uh, of the likes of Peter Dra- Jackson's film trilogies, the Lord of the Rings video games, and so on. Embracer has said it plans to collaborate with both the established and new recipients of these licenses and will explore other opportunities, including additional movies based on iconic characters such as Gandalf, Aragorn, Gollum, Galadriel, Eowyn and other characters from Tolkien's work. I am truly excited to have the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, one of the world's most epic fantasy franchises, join the Embracer family, opening up more transmedia opportunities, including synergies across our global group, said Lars Wingfors, founder and group CEO of Embracer. I am thrilled to see what lies in the future for this IP with free mode and Asmodee as the start with the group going forward. We are, we also look forward to collaborating with both existing and new external licensees for our increasingly stronger IP portfolio. That is a huge deal. That's huge. That's just even reading that. It's like, like that's like, like huge, like this purchase alone just solidified the fact that we are going to have Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth related content for everywhere, ever, ever, ever. 
Like that shit is never going away. We are going to have like Lord of the Rings forever. And the fact that like this this like this merger and purchase has been approved by HarperCollins and the Tolkien estate, yeah. uh, they're already yeah, like, in like dude, it cost like five hundred million dollars. It cost Amazon five hundred million dollars to get the rights to make the series that they're after right now. And and Brazer just bought the whole fucking like, bag. Just like, give like, me the entire oh, kitchen everything. sink, like everything. everything, all the characters, all the all the things, all it, all the titles, yeah, everything. Dude, dude. run oh. the entire thing. Okay, and like anybody, like a little bit of context here. Embracer Group is like the super group of like multimedia right now. Like they literally have like. CEOs and and like some of like the most tenured devs from every AAA studio you could ever imagine. Like literally just yeah, it's fucking Activision, Olympus, Blizzard, dude. EA, it's just Ubisoft, Bethesda. Yeah. Like fucking are literally everybody that's touched every AAA game you've ever loved and been in a Valve. Like they the all they have folks media. that live like, as part of the Embracer group now, and they said we want to do. Tolkien stuff Mortal ranks. Yeah. from now Give it. until forever. Uh, I'm hoping that this means we're going to get another decent Lord of the Rings game because uh, Golem sure. looks like doo doo does not look does <laughs> not look good, bro. Does not look good. No, no. no it doesn't. Uh, but I will tell you, I understand that it's not canon, but like uh, like Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor yeah. and Shadow of War yes. slapped, dude. Slapped. Those we're the some, nemesis like, system, dude. It's clever. Dude. It's fucking in it. It was like I feel like it was innovative, right? Like it it's created just, infinite, uh, infinite, unique gameplay the, moments. Exactly. Like if someone else could play that same game and have a totally different experience, nope. massively different. Like you mm -hmm. wouldn't have the same experience if you tried to, right? Like it's just, it's one of those things where it's just, oh, this is this is big news. This is like the high citadel of media just purchasing out like you just Dude, Lord of the just, Rings, everything. God. Rabbit. Wild. Oh my. And it, I'm excited. So yeah, like, me I'm too. Excited. Dude, the future of Lord of the Rings is forever. For now. Like it's, it's forever. forever now. It is definitely forever. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm That's I'm stoked. Just... Embracer Group has been actually making a lot of purchases lately. Like a lot. Yeah, dude, but like, but having, but having the cojones to just purchase like the, arguably like, the like most well-known like, fantasy epic ever. This chair, this is the, I'm Embracer, this is Lord of the Rings, dude, I'm like just, this is mine now, this is mine, I have this now, like they just did that. That, dude, that's that's exactly what they did. Like, so yeah, dude. Uh, no, dude, I'm th I'm thrilled. Like, I just need I like ex it, give me give me those more like a little less canon, more expanded like Shadow of yes. War games. Like, give me that extra yes. stuff, dude. Make stuff that's better than whatever the hell Gollum is gonna be. Uh, remaster <laughs> Third Age. That would be super duper smart. Um, <laughs> like, oh my god, <laughs> Shark. This like, is mine dude, now. <laughs> dude remaster war in the north yeah. like there's so many good lord of the rings video games that like could just get like redistributed now like amongst like right. ah, dude, i don't know it, the, i just like this is what a what a baller piece of fucking news the third age still yeah. holds up and i would love a switch port yes it does Ooh, i'd play a switch be, port sick. i'd play a switch port I'd play it mm -hmm. yeah i'd play it I no play it yeah that's pretty good it's pretty good um, yeah, no, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see what comes out of this. Um, it, it could only it could only be, you know, up from here. It doesn't look like that Golem game is going to be that great. <laughs> I did. No, we're it's not. We're shitting is, on the, all of us are which shitting is on what Golem. we were saying. We're just like, all right, cool. They're going to yeah. they're they're just going to improve on this now. So, like, hopefully, like we get stuff that's not whatever the hell Golem is going to end up being. So yeah. uh, I'm just glad the Lord of the Rings is just here to stay forever forever yeah. because Shark. it's here to stay forever on me too so yeah. like you know like i'm just i'm about it i'm super about it shark and chat you'd play a switch port but would you play switch sports um yes yes we I own would. switch we, sports. Have, we, we we did a yeah. stream with it we did garrick <laughs> suffered like an injury like with the fucking badminton i think <laughs> 
Dude, I actually did. Like, my shoulder was actually hurting, <laughs> yeah, like, you, next day. Like, I literally, dude, I was fucking, I was swinging for the fences, dude. That was really fun. We should, like, I, yeah, that, I we, like, we, we could do, do that again. again sometime. That was great. But, like, yeah. dude, so, so much fun. Uh, So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we yeah, should sure. play some Switch uh, sports we later. Some switch sports. Yeah, uh, we would play Switch sports. All right. That'd be fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, we are going to move into our next segment. But before we move into our next segment, I would like to remind everybody you can support us over on Discord, where soon you can get early access to this episode before it goes public. You can write into the show and you can also get this episode ad free. But if you're hearing this, you probably are on our Discord. So for now, here is a word from our sponsors. Sponsor. friendly materials and non-slip rubber in a variety of sizes that are guaranteed to help you get that next win. I've got one of these bad boys in my office at work. I've got one here at my desk right now. Devin's got one, Xander's got one. This bad boy is silky smooth, silkier and smoothier than even the silkiest of smoothiest of smoothies or soy milk or what have you. <laughs> You can go to GlideMousePads.com right now and use code Kraken for 15% off the Founders Edition mouse pad in every size available. Again, that's code K-R-A-K-E-N, Kraken, for 15% off any Founders Edition mouse pad today. Our next sponsor is Rogue Energy. Late nights are pretty much commonplace for all content creators, and anyone here at GK can attest that late nights are kind of our only nights. <laughs> Luckily for us, though, Rogue has figured out exactly how to give those late nights and even earlier mornings the supercharge that we all need. Rogue Energy is a low-calorie, no-sugar energy formula that is the perfect alternative to sugar-filled canned energy drinks and sodas. Every formula Rogue energy produces is designed with optimal levels of high quality ingredients and no chalky textures again we don't want that we don't want that being the only gaming drink company in the world with four unique product lines to suit your task at hand rogue energy strives to improve the in-game performance of gamers streamers and content creators around the world now i know that we've been riding this train for a long time you might be tired of us talking about this. You might not be tired of us. You might want to just support us anyways. And you know what? For those that do support us, we love you. But the best way to support us right now is to grab yourself a big old cup of Joe. When I say Joe, I mean this rogue energy stuff. I'm usually waking up first thing in the morning with a big old shit to get a big old shit. Oh, wow. You grab your rogue energy cup. Okay, you dip that bad, you just scoop that bad boy right on there. You get that bad boy shaky dakey, you know what I'm saying? And then you're out the dang door. Okay, you need this beverage in your life. I cannot express that enough. You can head on over to rogueenergy.com and use code GKraken for 10% off any purchase of shaker or formula tub of your choosing. That's G K R A K E N for 10% off any shaker or formula tub that you would like. Now, back to the episode. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, yeah, go check welcome. out. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome back. Welcome. Sorry, I just had to address your name again. Just, you know, <laughs> since, I, since I didn't do it properly earlier. Guys, we are going to be going to our next segment. Oh, hi, Surreal. Welcome in where these hands are getting put hey, on the decks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> on the decks. What's up? Hand What's up? on my decks, baby. <laughs> hands on the decks. Hands Hand on, on decks. my deck. <laughs> Eric, get it because it sounds what like. What have you been playing and you know, watching this week? Deck. 
Fucking nothing, man. I just reported yeah. on this on Tuesday. I haven't done anything new since then. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I actually, I did. Shit, I'll have to. God damn it. I'm going to have to consume new content for over the weekend to have something to talk about on Tuesday. I was going to talk about this on Tuesday, but I'll talk about it now. Um, but I did decide to pick up a brand new indie title uh, that just released mm -hmm. uh, this past Thursday called Thymesia. And uh, mm. this is a uh, $30 indie Bloodborne spiritual whatever you want to call it clone. Mm. Um, and it's $30. Uh-huh. Feels like it's a $30 game. That's all I'd like. Uh, so you, it's a, it's like it for those who haven't played Bloodborne, Bloodborne is like it as opposed to Dark Souls where it, it like rewards like patience and understanding mechanics and blocking. Uh, Bloodborne is super aggressive, very fast paced combat where it is more about parrying and dodging. Uh, and this really kind of takes on that combat system. Um, what sets this game apart is uh, it uses something called the plague weapon system. And before I tell you about that, I got to tell you a little bit about what Thymesia is about. Uh, you play as a uh, a character by the name of Corvus, um, which is suspiciously close to Corvo from Dishonored. But hey. Uh, and you play as this character who is a bench, who is essentially a plague doctor, but think a plague doctor. But if he were like Captain America, mm -hmm. so it's like super soldier like abilities mm -hmm. um, with the ability to weaponize uh, the plague that they can reeve from their enemies. Um, so basically you are trying to. Uh, Uncover your lost memories because that's literally what thymesia means. Uh, it means like like exceptional memory or great memory uh, in Latin. And uh, so Corvus has lost his memories of like what's occurred in his kingdom. And like he is part of this kingdom called Hermes that uses alchemy and weaponizes this alchemy to uh, to weaponize plagues. And basically plagues ravaged all the other kingdoms. But because Hermes fi like figured out how to use this alchemy, they can now uh, web they have created these super soldiers like Corvus, where they can now combat the plague with the plague. So you can like reeve uh, these plague weapons from enemies, and uh, which is interesting because it's actually this is uh, more of a Metroidvania mechanic than it is like a Soulsborne, uh, in the sense that like you can kind of dictate what plague weapon you are going to get based off of the weapon that the enemy you're fighting in game is wielding. That makes oh, sense. Oh, okay. So like if your if your opponent is wielding a hand axe and you reeve their plague from them, the plague weapon you're going to get is likely going to be a hand axe. Now, yours is going to be like some it's going to be like when you use it it'll be like this big spectral sort of flipping like flourishing ability that'll be way different than whatever that basic enemy was using then when you got it. But if you just reeve it from the enemy, you, it's just a one time use. Like you take it from that character, you use it, and then the slot, your your plague weapon slot opens up again. Like this is hands down the most unique thing about this game is this mechanic. Um, and then but every once in a while when you kill an enemy, uh, like another one you can get is uh, it's called a halberd, uh, the halberd attack or the halberd plague weapon. And uh, basically you can pick up that shard and then like once you've unlock once you're carrying so many shards you can go to like your beacons or bonfires like you would in a souls game and spend those shards to permanently unlock that plague weapon for your character's dedicated slot uh you can get up to two of these which means that ultimately you can hold two plague weapons on your person and then reeve one from an enemy so you'll okay. have three plague weapons total um <clears throat> The lore is pretty interesting. I've only really had the opportunity to go through the entire first zone, uh, which has accumulated so far in three boss fights. Um, and then a lot of like mini bosses along the way. Um, this is where like the budget and, and, and stuff of the game kind of really starts to show through. Um, the environment's a little uninspired, 
but they do try like the first zone's called the Twilight Circus uh, within this within the Sea of Trees, and it's not a bad zone, but uh, every single enemy is a human, uh, and like they don't really have like a lot of uniqueness in their design. Uh, they all just look very pilgrimy, um, and then uh, like the mini bosses are just like amped up versions of these same human models. Uh, but the characters in the Sea of Trees like have a plague that like wood things are like growing out of them. That's like their deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's got like a Dark Souls, uh, Dark uh, Dark Souls, uh, Dark Souls uh, presentation with its lore. Like as you're traipsing through these level uh, these levels, um, you are like picking up notes and like reading tooltips and like reading things, and that's how you're collecting information about the story. Uh, thankfully the game does like have a little compilation section where you can go through and read them all in order to figure out what the fuck's going on. The lore is pretty interesting. I figured for a $30 game, it was going to be pretty short. So I have been taking my time to like read the notes, um, that has enhanced the gameplay experience a little bit, which is good because the mechanics are really quite fucking unbalanced, uh, which is like where it hurts the game a lot for the kind of game it wants to be. Um, the parry window is like the biggest problem. It's the enemies do they have an animation type where like it's every every attack has like a very deliberate uh, telegraph in its presentation. But the problem is, is like it is presented to you as the player in the form of a really, really long wind up and then a quick swing. Mm. This makes for a really unnatural parry window uh, and like. Dark Souls and Elden Ring and like Sekiro, they circumvent that game by just making it feel more of like a natural human swing because that's like that's what your eye your like that's what your eyes want when you're playing these sorts of games. You're just like and he's swinging and tap the parry button, mm-hmm. but no, instead you're left with just like and he's swinging and you're like waiting to push the parry button right, and but the window itself self is still like where it wants you to parry and interact, uh, with like still before like the attack makes contact with the character. Yeah. So it's so, like, like it makes. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. So it makes yeah. sure the, the, the windows really like, and we're a game where like it's pay, it's like, it really wants you to reward you to attack, attack, attack a parry, then attack, attack some more mm-hmm. like that makes that really hard. Now there are like, there is a skill tree in this game that you can unlock uh, where you have like paths where you can kind of choose like, all right, do you want to go, you can either turn your parry into like a block where it will block X percentage of damage. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, but you don't have to like guess the window or you can use, or the other choice is you can expand the parry window, but reduce the effectiveness of the parry itself. Right. Mm-hmm. The stagger effect on it. And like the wound damage, uh, which is presented in this combat. So basically you have one weapon, that's like another thing that like that you aside from the plague weapons, Corvus only uses a saber, a sword. Um, so you attack with that and then you use your plague claw to like disperse the wound damage. So think like the red portion of like a health bar that would normally like reheal in most RPG video games. Like after you've gotten hit, like that's going to be green. Like you're trying to like you're hitting them. It's creating that green health bar. You're then attacking them with a plague ability that help and that that's how you're whittling down like boss mm. fights, etc. So it's fun. Uh oh, sorry, surreal in chat. Uh she asked how long the game is. The the developers say this game is about seven to nine hours. I'm about five hours in and I haven't completed the first zone because I'm struggling with some of the boss fights because the mechanics aren't super sound. That's mm-hmm. been my experience with the game. Um the thing is is like it tries so hard to replicate the experience of Bloodborne, it forgets to like have its own identity in the process. Yeah. And like for for thirty dollars and a nine hour game, I would say this might be worth your time, but unless they're willing to like patch some of the things that like are very obviously like an imbalance of their own mechanics. It's really frustrating to go to a boss fight, the very first boss fight, which is also a human, not even like a monster, a human, which is really mm. lame in a game like this. If you ask me, we're like monster, we're creature we're design game. Big deal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, and you're just like, okay, 
you're like you're not even gonna give me like a cool boss fight design it's just gonna be like a, it's just gonna be like a circus ringleader dude uh and then like i finally beat this dude and like i was just like i felt like i was fighting the mechanics themselves more than i was him the whole fight and like it got yeah. to the point where like i ended up beating him by just ignoring the parry mechanic i just stopped yeah. using it and dodged the whole time and beat him that way so i was i like literally stopped using one of the main mechanics of the game to like circumvent like how they wanted me to do the fight to be able to finish the fight because like it didn't feel like it did the fight didn't feel sound like it didn't didn't feel mechanically good um if this goes on sale for 20 bucks or less and you like souls like games pick it up because the lore is interesting enough uh that like it's got like some it's got like a good self like it's a good like a quick burn sort Mm -hmm. of game uh but you're definitely going to be really frustrated with like how the combat goes especially because the mini bosses are like ridiculously hard for no reason, but they're just amped up versions of regular enemies. So like there's just things where like the budget really, really shows through like, there's not like the boss fights are pretty uninspired. The second boss fight, you don't actually fight the boss. You just like go through a gauntlet of enemies and then like trigger an execution at the end. Like that was like, which was a very, which is a much more Metroidvania experience than like a soul's experience. And so like it felt I was just like, oh, that's weird. I would have really liked to fight the cool gigantic. So it's like 60 caught skeleton. in the middle. Yeah. And so like where it like it just lacks identity like in the mm. game. And so like like so there was like there's some uninspired enemy design and like the combat's not super balanced. Like it doesn't it feels there's some there's definitely some clunk uh, in like the way that the game feels. Mm. Uh, and like like I said, this is a thirty dollar game. Uh, so go into it with that mindset and you're probably going to have a pretty good experience. Um, but if you're coming off of games like Sekiro or literally any from software title or even like any like focus entertainment games uh, like um, like like uh, like the Surge titles like Surge 1, Surge yeah. 2, Neo, like even those games are going to feel more mechanically sound than this has in like my experience with it. Okay. So, gotcha. so that's Thymesia. Like honestly, it's like, I even like I I I unless the ending in this game just like absolutely blows me away. Like I'll re I'll re up update my uh thing. But the, like this is a six. Like this game is a six out of ten. Yeah, I was about to say like day. it sounds like a six. Like yeah, like it's just, just like like it's not bad and it tries to do some super cool things, but it lacks identity and like in versatility in its gameplay. Uh, and like it's just it's it's hampered by its own indiness and its own budget and it's it's want to be bloodborne. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. DJ, yes, what have you been playing or watching? This so, week? um, you know, I I kind of forgot about this, um, you know, coming into this week, but uh, as a huge fan of the Tekken series. Right, the Tekken Bloodline animated show has been released uh, two days ago yes. onto Netflix. Uh, all six episodes uh, are on there, uh, so it's a, it's a full release. There's no timed episode releases or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, there's six episodes, each around like 25 minutes long. I have not watched. I've only watched episode one just because uh, I just saw it last night, and you know I was like, I'll I'll give it a whirl. Um, animation looks great. Um, this follows the Tekken 3 storyline, which is, um, in my top 10 games of all time. Mm. And, um, the Tekken lore, they've mentioned the Tekken 3 storyline, uh, the canon storyline, um, in like Tekken 6 and 7. Um, but, you know, it's in like pieces. It's not like a full fleshed out story. And I think this is the, the goal of this show. It's, um, it's not going to be I from my first impressions of the the first episode. It's not going to be blowing you uh, anyone away in terms of like like arcane was like that's like yeah, nothing's going to top that in terms of like video game adaptation into show. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a it looks like it's going to be pretty fun. Um, it, it'll, it'll definitely bring some new eyes to the game, and uh, you know. And to these characters and the um, 
the show adaptation of these characters. And, uh, and of course, Tekken 8 is being teased, you know, every so often here. So, mm. you know, it's definitely going to garner some attention for this new release uh, or this, this new Tekken game that's going to come out. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think this studio who did this animation did another uh, animated anime show on Netflix. It's like half half like animation like it, or like it's animated in a, in a way it looks kind of like CG. Oh, did they do like the 2.5D anime? Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's kind of like Which one that. did they do? But, do you know which uh, one by chance? Uh it's I don't I I forgot it. It's like um but it it was popular. I, I, um I'm looking I know it, it was popular. They did like I'm um, yeah, I'm doing a little bit of research on it right now. Yeah, doing a doing a little bit of doing a little bit of research. Um, is it? Fuck. I'm trying to find ahead, it. You, I'll I'll look it up. You continue your review. Okay. Keep but, keep going. Keep going. So so, um, yeah. Like Tekken. Tekken has been like one of my my favorite like games of all time. Like, like I love the fighting game. I think it it's legend. It's a it's legendary. It's actually like you know, one of the the like pinnacle fighting games and like really boosted playstation like back in the day so to, to like what it is now like i think it's like one of the like the second game to sell like over a million copies like for playstation i think like mm-hmm. behind like final fantasy 7 um and it's just it's just a good game and and tekken 3 spe- specifically it's a nice story it follows the the main protagonist is jin kazama which is the main like the main poster poster guy on Tekken 3 and uh you know it's like the it covers like kind of like the before the Tekken tournament in in Tekken 3 and then like during it um and there's some new characters uh, added in I've uh, according to the trailers you've seen uh, Leroy which is a a new character in Tekken 7 that is now being put in to the the canon storyline in of tekken 3 so um so it's definitely not the the exact same storyline it's definitely some changes from the game um so i'm i'm excited to see how the rest of the show turns out first episode has been pretty good a little bit of a slow start but um of course i think every show has a little bit of a slow start honestly um but yeah I, i i'm excited to finish the show out um and see how how good it is. Uh, apparently, it's doing, it's having some good reception amongst people who have already watched it. Uh, uh, dude, six episodes is super bingeable too. Okay, yeah, so super bingeable. Ready, steady, cut says it's a four out of five. So, um, yeah. I just looked it up, and mm-hmm. they did uh, Dota Dragon's Blood. Dude, Dota mm-hmm. Dragon's Blood is tight. Yeah, they did that. Yeah. And it looks like this studio also worked on uh, the Sea Beast as well. Mm. Um, this is on Netflix. I mean, they've done a lot more. I'm just I'm just looking at the stuff that they've, yeah. they've worked on on uh, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah, Dota's Dota's Dragon Blood was like one of the things that they mm-hmm. mentioned. Like when uh, I was looking this show up, like when they had announced it, like a few months ago. There's a uh, Netflix movie coming out that's a that's a kids movie called My Father's Dragon. It's completed, but it does not have. Oh, they worked on the Way of the House Husband, Garrick. Oh, really? Oh, dude, such <laughs> yeah. a fucking good. They show. They also did yeah, that's, uh, that's Super a Crooks, show. as well. Another good mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah. I watched so, that yeah. show. So, that was a good one. So it definitely has some credibility. So, they've, so yeah, they've yeah. got their hands I, on some of the better Netflix uh, animes for sure. Oh, they're working on an yeah. Ultraman right now. Dude, so, Ultraman's out. Have you watched it yet? It's yeah, fucking good. Yeah, there's another one that's in pre-production from the same studio. I think it's a movie Ooh. though. Yeah, Ooh. no, no, no. They're like their new stuff. Uh, that's like one of the best like 2.5 D like animes is the Ultraman mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Well, From I'll have to check reception that out. I'll this, have to check yeah. that out. Yeah, I was it planning on like watching it. This is it. a W. Yeah, this this seems this like a, a, a W. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the video game to anime or not even necessarily or an, to any like video game to anime animation adaptation lately has been like it's been it's been on, on it's point. been good. Dota, I Castlevania Dota, Dota's is my favorite. Good. Castlevania is super fucking good. Arcane uh, is just Dragon's there. Dogma is good. Arcane, I haven't seen it, but I know like, it got like incredible reception. Like uh, yeah. the Cyberpunk one got a lot of attention too. Oh, I yeah, need to watch like, the Cyberpunk. Yeah, I need there's to watch There's so that too. many like, like yeah, there's like there's just been like a lot of good uh, video game to add like a uh, mm-hmm. like two animation adaptations lately. The Cuphead one sucked, but the, you know whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch the Cuphead mm-hmm. one. Um, me myself, I haven't really picked up a lot of new ish content. Um, I won't dive into it too much. I'll, I'll give like a couple point fives or like point threes or whatever here for you guys. Uh, but I did watch the first episode of She Hulk, and all I have to mm-hmm. say oh. is, if you guys are a fan of the MCU, go watch She Hulk. Definitely go watch that. It is actually really enjoyable and uh it's really nice because you get to see a lot more of the hulk and it 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 is a she hulk show but it also feels like a hulk show at the same time at least so far Mm -hmm. um which is really nice uh i feel like Mm -hmm. they they did a good job with the uh the comedy in this show um because they're they're trying really hard to make it feel like a courtroom lawyer show but also very MCU at the same time. And I think so far they're hitting the nail on the head. Uh, It also had a ton of Easter eggs um, pertaining to the MCU in general as well, which I thought it was really cool. Like you see some items from like the other movies and stuff like that integrated Mm -hmm. within the show. Uh, So they're doing a really good job with with keeping the continuity there um, in the overarching MCU story so far. and uh yeah it's 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 very enjoyable it's probably one of the better pieces of mcu content that i've seen as a disney plus show i think it has the strongest opening out of all the shows actually of all the disney plus shows definitely the strongest yeah. first episode yeah uh right away it skipped like all the origin story bullcrap in like a really kind of fun way <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. like it like it if it, it found it found like a really good way to make it like bite size and honestly it probably has like one of the best like first episode like post credit scenes. Oh, it in does. The MCU. It does. It does. It, it the, yeah, the post credit scene then. is great. Yeah, I I recommend it. I recommend it. I think the show is going to be really fun, and we already know there's going to be a lot of cameos in this show. Like they've showed Daredevil in the trailer. We got Abomination. We got Wong. You know, obviously, you know Bruce Banner, Hulk, um, and there's going to be more. Is what they said. They pretty much um, there'll be more when when they were I saw this thing when they were writing the show, Kevin Feige said you can use everybody but two characters. And one of those characters was Spider-Man. I don't know who the other character was. It was probably Kang. It was probably Kang. Probably Kang. Yeah, yeah I, I think they just teased a couple of the ones that people like may have been expecting just because like obviously like Charlie Cox. Like, that makes sense. Yeah. He's, you know, because as Daredevil, because courtroom drama. Yeah, like, Matt Murdock. That, like, that, that's, uh, that tracks, like, Matt Murdock's lawyer, like yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. So, and then, you know, Hulk, obviously. And then who was, well, there was one other one that we the, saw well, in the Wong. trailer. There's Wong. Wong. That's who it was. And then, yeah. was there one more? Or was it just, uh, oh, abomination. and Abomination. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we've seen so far. That was just what we got in the trailer and, like, through the first episode. Yeah. Was, and I, and I and have like, a feeling we're going to see a lot more. I think, yeah, I think we're it's gonna, see gonna be. How many episodes is it gonna be? Nine. Nine. I think. Yeah, nine episodes, forty-five minutes yeah. to an hour long each one. So. Yeah, because the, like the the season finale is not till October. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this show. Actually, I I I remember like the very first trailer. I was kind of like meh. You know, I'm like okay, and then the the trailer they came out with like a few weeks ago. That's when I was like. Yeah, I really want to watch the show now, you know, um, dude. The, the first episode was just so it was just so fucking well rounded. and good. It was it was it was funny. It was funny. Just a normal amount of rage, guys. <laughs> uh, dude, there was a couple of moments where like I like l- 
legitimately like, laughed out loud. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. the, especially like when I got to the post credit scene, like I actually like I like oh, I same. belly laughed. I belly laughed hard. And there was a couple of other like really good moments where like, mm-hmm. like I don't know, like it just like. It, and she just looks like she felt like she just like she differentiated herself from like being a normal Hulk so fast. Like, yeah, like so like your yeah. expectations are like immediately subverted. The Hulk. And so whoa, whoa, whoa there, girl. What are you doing? <laughs> why are you? Do- yeah, exactly. Dude. So like there was some like, why are you talking to me like I'm a horse? And it's so, like there was just so many like things where you're just like it immediately like that's It's not what I expected it to be. And I don't think it was like, what a lot of people were expecting it to be in just a really positive way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I enjoyed that. Um, not going to talk too much on it. Uh, because we are definitely going to be doing a full review once the show is completed. Uh, but mm-hmm. I am just here to say, go watch that show. Um, my other thing is uh, I started playing Daisy again, getting getting, and I found it a is. server God damn that, that is modded that has dinosaurs on it, like velociraptors, raptors, T Rexes, and stuff like that. <laughs> and so too much, mixed bro. with mixed with zombies too, so it's zombies. Uh, dinosaurs. Are there dinosaurs, and of course, other dinosaurs? players. Are they say, are there zombie dinosaurs? I don't know. I, I've only been playing on it for a couple days now, but uh, yeah, it's it's wild. Those dinosaurs <laughs> they fucking get you, dude. Thankfully, thankfully, like once you get inside a building, they can't get you. Obviously, like you know, but uh, but well, you, Velociraptor better be able to get you in a building. Yeah. Or I'm calling some BS. Well, well yeah. if you get inside the building and close it down, they can't get you. Yeah. Velociraptor. Oh, it's a mod. <laughs> it's not an official thing in the yeah. game. Okay. I know, but I'm just. I'm Garrett, sure. Like, it's a, are there are there like a lot this, of them? This sounds like, not like a whole this sounds lot. like something you yet. would dream up like when you're a kid. Like, you know, if I made my own video game, I want dinosaurs. I want zombies. <laughs> I want. Do you guys want to go out in the backyard and play dinosaurs <laughs> and zombies? It's like seven days to die and like to rock mixed together. <laughs> Honestly, it not a bad combination. So weird. Yeah. I mean, not. Yeah, it just sounds weird, though. It's fun, yeah, it is. Garrick. I can't wait for you to get this game. Eventually. Like, Eventually. please, please get this game. Um, but yeah, no, I'm enjoying my time with it. Um, it's it's got a cool little community around it. Sometimes it can be hard to get into the server because it'll be populated, you know, and you'll have to wait in queue. Oh yeah, I've got to wait mm. your turn. Um, but. Man, I am just impressed that that game has been out as long as it has been and that it's been kept alive by the modding community and has had such a close knit community around it. Um, it's just cool a to cool see. classic sort of game. Like mm-hmm. it definitely has yeah. been kept alive by a very dedicated number of players. Yeah. And people keep buying the game and getting into it. And um, there are streamers out there who have been streaming it again and stuff. I know Shroud's pretty steady views. Yeah. Yeah. Shroud's been playing the game even. <laughs> So, which is surprising. Um, yeah, which will bring in a lot of new viewership to the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my friends, he started as a um, a Daisy streamer like three, four months ago, and he's already got like two thousand followers just playing Daisy. That's it. That's all he plays on stream. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, there's no, a market I, for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely, definitely uh, recommend playing it if you're at all interested in survival or um, or or just playing with mods. Honestly, it's it's a great platform to play with mods on. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been playing and watching. All Word. right. All right, y'all, we are going to head into our next and final segment. But before we go there, I just need to remind everybody to protect your neck because we are headed into the gallows. Oh, the gallows. Grr. Grr. Guys, today, with all of the news that we've been getting from Warner Brothers over the last couple weeks, I think it is time we talk about what our predictions for the future of the DCEU is. It's going to be an open forum discussion. I will I will say one thing first. Just cancel the fucking Flash movie. Just cancel it, please. Ezra Miller is such a problematic person. 
you do not need that person representing the character Flash or the DC or Warner Brothers in any way, any way, shape or form. Yeah. Plus, he has no, really bad dude, feet. Like, just like <laughs> the fact that like it's just really weird to me that like. They canceled Batgirl because they did a test viewing uh, like it was so like this was in the, the film was in post-production uh, the, and the test reviews did like insanely poor which is like why the film got scrapped in the state that it was like because they basically saw it as like an irrecoverable loss so like regardless of your personal feelings on it like that's why they did it from the business end and i get that and like but like that was just basically the start of it all because they all we also had like the discovery merger with warner like yeah. happening with warner Bros. at the same time now you wouldn't i don't understand the correlation necessarily as to why this had such a massive impact on the like the dceu i think they just saw it as convenient timing to just wipe the slate clean uh because uh let's like let's be honest the dceu is like their problem hasn't been their characters or their stories it's been their fucking writers and directors yeah. Like their yeah. castings haven't even necessarily been like off the mark for like the most part, you know, but like they're just like they're choosing to utilize characters in either like a really weird ass way um, or like we're still just getting like another bat. Like I love the Batman. Don't get me wrong. I love the Batman. But like it, the umpteenth Batman movie, you know, like there's like, yeah, we're like there's just so many other characters that deserve like some light uh in the dc universe that could like help expand like the viewership like on the films and stuff which is what they're struggling with people are just super super tired of seeing batman and superman i think people are just like really over that uh like just uh, like their representation in like cinema and as heroes is just really played out mm -hmm. at this point and people yeah. are done with dealing with those characters and like we just need to move on like just put mm. Wonder Woman at the head of like the Justice League, redo it to like like the the Avengers wasn't the original Avengers from the comic. Yeah, like they like they like they made it a, something that made more sense for the modern era, and which is why they're doing what they are right. Like they've even said that like they are mimicking a similar plan to Marvel, which they should have just done from the get go. Like there's the plan. There's nothing wrong with mimicking the plan. Right. Like, yeah. just don't mimic. It stories. works. Yeah. Like, like have the same agenda, have the same release program and write all of your stuff with a bigger picture in mind. Quit doing this. Like this film is Earth, like one, two, nine, nine, eight, six, four, five. And this one is Earth nine, two, butthole six Q. Like no one gives yeah, a I, fuck what universe this is taking place in. Especially but, yeah. it's confusing and frustrating for your viewership. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think they need to put somebody at the the head of of production for for the overarch arching. They need, uh, a, they need a Feige. Yeah, and I I personally think it should be James Gunn, one hundred percent. You think so? I do. I see. The thing is, is like I I love James Gunn, and I will and I will for like I will die on the hill that the Suicide Squad is the best piece of DC content we've ever gotten to, to date. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but like there's like he he has like a flavor to his films that I don't think. Oh, I mean, I guess if he's just over yeah, everything, exactly. he's not necessarily okay. Okay, like now yeah. I'm seeing your thought. Because like I, I'm, I'm I'm working through it as I'm talking it out. But I could see that maybe because he's just an idea guy at that point. Yeah, because like they've already integrated his films with the DCEU, but it, or his film and his show, I should say. Uh, they've already yes. integrated it with the same characters. So I think they could still carry that on. We could change change the Flash to the guy who played Flash in the TV show because he can do it. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Grant, Grant Austin, I think is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Grant Austin. Yeah. He should definitely be the Flash. Find a way to write out Ezra Miller and just get rid of him um, completely. Uh, maybe in Flashpoint, it just changes to Grant's perspective. I don't know. <laughs> you know. That, that's what yeah, we would dude, all love. Yeah, there's they have to like you. They have to be like at least reconsidering something at this point. Right. Yeah. Like because there's just so many things that's going on. So with that, like with all that being said, like with like the merge, like that's that's kind of like the catch up on mm -hmm. like you could like that gets everybody caught up on like 
like the recent the recent news um, and like kind of like, you know, states like this is like they're they're going to be mimicking like a Marvel plan going forward yeah, for the next um, 10 years or something like that. So I have pulled up um, a release schedule of like uh, I'm going to focus on the films because that's like pro- that's what most of this is about. Right. Yeah. Like it's their film direction. Uh, I mean, there's going to be like a couple like characters, like obviously Peacemaker, like he's integrated in like his character and James Gunn's the Suicide Squad characters are part of like the 10 year plan. Right. Mm-hmm. They're, like they're they have been like they're they like they, you know, they Pasco collected two hundred dollars like they're part. They made it onto the next round of like mm-hmm. heroes that are going to be part of like the future of the DCEU. So uh, Shazam has obviously made that cut as well, um, which is also another better piece of DC uh, content. Um, Mm -hmm. And that makes sense because uh, the first piece of DC EU content we're going to be getting uh, this year or like going forward to the like the next second half of the year is actually going to be Black Adam, uh, which which comes out actually. Yeah, which comes out in October. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then after Black Adam, we have in December, we have Shazam. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is like those 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 characters have two direct correlations with one another. Um, let's see. And then we've got coming early 2023. We have Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Uh, that's going to be <laughs> ill received. Just like, look, I understand that, like, they've reduced from what I understand. Uh, excuse me. They've reduced her screen time to like 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, but like the first movie was just eh, it was OK. Um, and so like we've got the sequel to that. So we'll see how that does. Um, as of right now, the flash is still getting released in June of 2023. That's a stupid move. Uh, thank fucking God. Blue beetle got saved and is still planning for an August yeah. release, uh, which is dope because, uh, not only is a uh, blue beetle, a Hispanic superhero, um, they have like a really fucking cool power set. I don't know if you guys know jack shit about blue beetle, but uh blue beetle is like, they have like this sentient like alien scarab that's like fused to the character's spine mm-hmm. mm. and he can like tap into it and it like and it like literally like symbiote suits over him. It's dope as shit. Like mm-hmm. and like if you guys like you pull up, like go ahead and look up the blue beetle suit right now and like the, the screenshots from it. It looks super, super rad. I'm familiar um, just from the infamous games. Fair enough. Or injustice. Uh, but yeah. Sorry. Injustice, yeah, the yeah. Injust- the injustice games. Um, but, oh, it looks uh, sick, actually. Yeah, Ooh. It's super tight. Um, and see, this is he's also like a younger, like a teenage, like level superhero. Like think like Spider Man sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And so like yeah. this is this is uh, DC's like real first like sh- you could kind of argue that Shazam like is in that realm too. But like Shazam turns into an adult. Like this kid doesn't. He just gets like alien scare of superpowers. Yeah. Um. Then we've got like you know. So we, then we have uh. Peacemaker season two, eventually um, the Joker, which is like its own universe. Right. But it was such a success. They're still going to continue on with it. Uh, Wonder Woman three is in development. Right. We are aware of that. The sequel to the Batman. Uh, do you guys think there's any likelihood that the Batman uh, like merges into current? Or do you think the way this, the universes are represented are too different? I think they're two different ones. I, I think, think so too. Yeah, I think for the DCEU, I think there's especially now that we know that um, we got Batfleck back. Yeah, I, I think I think yeah. we're going to continue to see Batfleck, especially if they're continuing on with Wonder Woman, you know, Gal Gadot and everything. I think they're going to bring that back. The The biggest question I have is like, we don't need another Superman movie, but in the overarching Justice League. I there needs like we, to be a Superman. Exactly. It need, yeah. And it really need, does me need personally, Superman. it's really hard for me to see anybody else but Henry Cavill be that Superman. Because I think he's genuinely a good Superman and like fits the me too. look I and love the Man style. Of, I love and, and, I love and, Man of Steel. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, I genuinely think it should be him. It, it wouldn't be a bad idea, like maybe seeing another like Superman movie, but something that like had other characters like maybe like Supergirl or something or even like Batman shows up because that's how it is in the comics anyways and and with the animated shows and movies you know it'll be Mm -hmm. a Superman movie or a Batman movie but we'll still have like Green Arrow we need a Green Arrow we need a DCEU Green Arrow and a good one yeah 
We do. Yeah. He, he's one of, I mean, like, he's like an integral part of the Justice League. Of the Justice League. That's, that's like the crappy part, too, is like the Flash and like in Green Arrow are super important yeah. to the Justice League. And like, also, why the hell has nobody bothered to like do anything with like Martian Manhunter yet? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Martian yeah. Manhunter or or get a proper Green Lantern. Like that's what I was, I was just about to say. Green Lantern. Do we? Like, we are. See, it's a bummer thing for because a green, like better Green Lantern. We're getting a Green Lantern core TV show. Mm. Um, but like I don't. But like that stuff is so separate from the DCEU. Like it's so removed. Like they don't. Like they don't interact at all. They interact with each other, but not the films. Yeah. Uh, so which is a bummer. And like, so I don't know if we'll get like another Green Lantern like anytime soon, especially just because like, honestly, we just need to not do uh, the the Hal version. It needs to be. Uh, yeah. Um, what's his name? I'm looking it up. Hank. I'm looking it up. Green. John Stewart. John Stewart. Really? Yeah. That's the, John, yeah. Yep. Yeah. John, John Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, yeah. John like, yeah. He, he's the best Green there's Lantern. There's like three. There's like three of them, right? There's like, is yeah. Like John Stewart was like the second. The he the, the, the second, second one. Green Lantern. Yeah. He he was he's like our childhood. Yeah, Green he's, yeah. he's he's, our, he's, he's our like Green the Lantern. best one in my opinion too. Dude, me too. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is like I would have cast Idris Elba in that role. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, but like he's already like. He's but already... he's already he's already blood sport. So yeah. And he he does a great blood sport too. Yeah, he does. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm 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 actually interested. I'm gonna see if there's any um, um, uh, fan casting for it. You know, um, you know, I would also really like to see uh, a Constantine two with Keanu Reeves returning. And he I would could, he could come back as the character. Kill, I think. Yeah. Um, He'd kill it. And and you want to know it. who else could absolutely be um like a fucking just an absolute amazing constantine who uh the dude who plays homelander oh yeah Ooh, actually and that would be co- like he has that comic book accurate look too look that's the yeah. look yeah, he's got the look yeah he has you no know look. he can have like you know he can have like the attitude that like constantine like brings to the table right. yeah dude like that'd be it what's his freaking name man the boys uh, i'll look it up right now <laughs> his name is Anthony Starr. Anthony Starr, yeah. Anthony Starr. Anthony. Anthony. Anthony Starr, sorry. So um for fan casting, the uh the most upvoted fan casting uh for John Stewart Green Lantern is Trevante Rhodes. And Trevante yeah. Rhodes was Trevante in Rhodes Moonlight, uh, 12 Strong, um uh, the 2018 The Predator. He was in uh, Bird Box. Um. Yeah. Oh, oh this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he does. Yes, he yeah. does look like like John Stewart. I could see this him. John yeah. Stewart. Yeah. Yeah. He was also yeah. in Westworld. Yeah. He he's lo- got like he's got the jaw. He's got like the like the look. He's like mm-hmm. the like look for it. Yeah. 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 I could see that. Yeah, I could see him being uh, John Stewart. Um, he's the most upvoted. Yeah, when he's serious, like when he doesn't smile, it's like. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. Serious. Yeah. Yeah. I see it too. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Idris Elba was pretty high up there, but uh, in front of him we had uh, John David Washington was also. Um, yeah, yeah, mm. but he's busy, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, John Boyega is on there too. John Boyega, really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he's on the fan casting. Someone tried to say Donald Glover, but he got downvoted a lot. No. <laughs> Yeah. No. We need no. him as Prowler in Can't the MCU. It. Maybe. Oh yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, he's already I mean, like, set he's already, up for it. He's, he's already set kinda, up for it. We'll see. That doesn't mean they have to use it. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I mean, yeah. Does Miles exist? I mean, like. I mean, but the thing is, is like we don't really know. People. We don't know up. much about. Like I, I like as far as like movies, we know that like. As far out as things go right now, we have Wonder Woman three is like as far as like the DCEU goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we know that there's going to be like some sort of Justice League dark in the future, but we don't know if it's even going to be a TV series or a film. 
Um, mm-hmm. We know the static shock is happening, but we don't know if that's going to be a TV series or a film. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Like Batgirl got scrapped, which was a, a bummer because uh, Brendan Fraser was set to be Firefly, which is the as a villain in that. Mm-hmm. Um, he does play. And, was it Robot Man or whatever in um, Doom Patrol? Yes, in Doom Patrol. Yeah. But the thing is, is like that's also kind of a bummer, too, because like the way that the DCEU works right now, like they need, I feel like they need to blend in some of their shows. Like they need to find a way to make Mm -hmm. some of those work because it is just, this is why it's so frustrating. This is why it's so frustrating to like some of their shows because Mm -hmm. I really like Titans and I really like doom patrol. Yeah. Um, and they, but like in Titans, like in Titans, uh, Batman's freaking retired. Yep. Like, you yeah. know, like, so like it, that, so that he, that doesn't make sense in the DCEU. And like, there's like, there are things that have like just occurred like in their own little canon that literally makes it so like you can't bridge them into the front, like the current mm. form of con, like the continuity is not there, which is what's mm. so annoying. They need to like, like let the CW shows be like the CW shows. Like that's, that's yeah. fine. Like that doesn't need to be a part of the DC. We can let those be B grade DC. Everybody's happy with those as they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but like the stuff that we are that like Warner Brothers intends on doing for like uh, HBO Max or whatever HBO Max merges into next year, mm-hmm. like those need to be a part of the, the film continuity. Yep. It is important. Mm. That is how you get more viewership it is how you expand to lower tier level heroes that don't make sense for your silver screen projects but can mm-hmm. still but characters people are still interested in or you know or like you get like a character that has like a that, that like a mid-tier like silver screen reception but would translate great to like uh like a streaming service peacemaker was a perfect example like he was not at all my favorite character in the suicide squad pissed me off as a matter of fact because of what he did yeah. in that movie but uh, I'm not going to spoil it in case anybody hasn't seen it yet. Yeah. But uh, but Peacemaker, the show was a 10 out of 10 all day. Yep. It was fucking amazing. It was fucking like, amazing. so good. But like, but the continuity was there. Mm-hmm. The characters translated. We, we built the attachment and understood its relationship to the films at large. When you have like all these strings of like various different universes and all this other like B tier content, which is what DC's and Warner Brothers is just constantly fed us over the last like God knows how many years. Like that's why we've been really struggling. Like the Green Arrow is good within its own continuity. The Flash is good within its own continuity. Supergirl, like you know, Superman and Lois, like the like the, all of those shows aren't necessarily bad, but none of them would translate into the DCEU. It's mm-hmm. it's a problem mm-hmm. because. Because Disney's taken such a big advantage over like like their streaming platform accessibility and like releasing their content on that. And even before then, they had to deal with Netflix. And the Netflix Marvel stuff was good too. Yeah. Yep. And and here's the thing. They're integrating those characters from Netflix Marvel too. They're they're gonna be a little rewritten and it's gonna be a little different and it's gonna be viewed as a as a reboot. But they made the connection in those Netflix shows to the mm-hmm. Avengers and talked about the Battle of New York and all that stuff. They yep. they already established the multiverse in such a clean as clean of a way as it can be. It can still be a little confusing, but right. they have established it and explained it very well throughout all the movies and especially with Loki. Um, so it's it's they they have that way to to bring these characters in and have them be a little bit different even with the same actors portraying these characters and i feel like i and i i feel like the reason that they're still coming out with flashpoint is because that is what that movie is supposed to do for the dceu i think that might be part of it um you know I, I can only speculate because that, that's what happens in the in the Flashpoint com- Flashpoint comics and original like animated movie is it changed, you know, who who was involved mostly like moving forward because of the changes that Barry Allen makes, you know, to save his mom. Yeah, exactly. And so like, I, which is I'm. I'm I'm with you on that, Devin. Like, I'm assuming that that's pretty much the only reason this is like still even going forward with it, because 
otherwise, like they would have, they would have like canceled the movie when he like yeah. choke slammed that person in the grocery store, yeah. like Definitely. which was the yeah. like which was like the start of a horrible gross downhill slide for Ezra Miller. Yeah, he's like um, everywhere. He's like he was in Hawaii, then he's in Vermont. It's like this guy just and the dude is on film just hurting could... people everywhere he goes. Like it's or just like verbally abusing people, like it's a or or abducting them and making weird cryptic yeah. tweets at the cops. They the dude's have not, problem. not been the best role model, especially for a superhero role. And his feet are just yeah, their feet is. Um, I will Ezra's say uh, I haven't seen their else. feet, but I'm, yeah. I'm glad I haven't. I will say Don't Brenton uh, yeah. Thwaites is that how you say his last name? Uh, the guy who plays Dick Grayson in Titans, he would be a awesome robin or nightwing in the dceu that that talk yes. about great Absolutely. casting and um uh joshua orpin who they got who they cast as superboy definitely a superboy definitely looks like it yeah he looks he yeah. looks it too yeah they're like and see like that's like the thing is like they need to like to, to condense the, all this into a neat little package here like dc needs to have a, they need to have like a head producer they need they need to find their feige like mm-hmm. yeah. and like they need to find their feige they need to find a core group of writers and directors that they're willing to move to different projects and keep on various projects you know like uh like taika has got like they got two thor movies and they're getting i think some other they're getting like another marvel project that's like not related to thor at all and like James Gunn is coming back and like still doing Guardians of the Galaxy and like they like they but they like it's all a core group of people and like now we've got the like the writer from or the director excuse me from Shang Chi moving on to Avengers uh, Avengers like you know like but like it's it's like core writers like everybody's kind of working in the same group like it, it's a team effort and then like you need to integrate your TV shows at least the ones available on like whatever your HBO Max streaming service is going to be, those need to be present and have a direct connection to the universe on your silver screen. Like that's what mm-hmm. DC needs. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I need a reason to care about these characters other than the fact that I'm just a fan of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I let, you know, let's hope that with uh, these new movies coming out that we see a, um, an obvious reconstruction of things moving forward. You know, I I'm excited for black Adam because that's going to introduce a lot of new characters and lay a lot of groundwork for other things to come. Um, and if they're going to do justice league dark, we need a Constantine. We need a Constantine. We have to have essentially he's like, he's the leader. Yeah. Alongside with like him and Batman. He is DC's Dr. Strange. 100%. hundred percent. hundred percent. He's their paranormal Mm -hmm. guy. Yep. Yep. Um, but you know, I think we've kind of summed up a lot of our concerns with the future of the DCEU for the most part. Um, I know this is going to be a topic that we're going to revisit as more news comes out over the next year. Um, so I, I actually look forward to that, especially after seeing what Marvel's about to announce and what they're about to do. It'd be, it'd be fun to do a comparison here in a few months after we get some more announcements out of Warner brothers with, uh, DC, um, but other than that, I think I'd like to conclude this and let everybody know what we got on our upcoming schedule Tuesday. We are going to be doing another GK podcast where we will be talking about the death of video game strategy guide walkthroughs. And I'm actually going to look through some of my storage and see if I can find them because I, I have, have a quite couple a few. on some shelves. Yeah. I like yeah. I'm literally and dude, and you know, they're all prima guides, bro, which is why yeah. we're going to be talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot. <laughs> like I have some special edition ones for like kingdom hearts and like final yep, fantasy. Me too. Like Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Yeah. I have yep. some cool ones. I have some cool ones. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday. I am going to be streaming another episode of seventh Brevin and we are going to be playing destiny two and we're going to be playing the brand new season 18 content. They have not announced what it's called yet and they have not said anything about the story at all. Um, they actually won't be announcing any of it till the launch of the season, the previous day on Tuesday. That's when they're going to announce all the content last minute, huh? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. But you know what? I'm here for it because uh, they're uh, reworking the arc subclass. 
I saw now. the arc and uh, they're adding a lot of new uh, new abilities and stuff like that. They've pretty much done that with all the older um, subclasses, you know, uh, with Void and, and Solar the last couple seasons. Um, right. So this is a very welcome thing. It's going to refresh the game a lot. It's going to change the meta of everything. And um, I just beat the um, the seasonal content uh, for the last season the other day because I, I took a big break from this game and I uh, mm-hmm. finished the season pass as well. So, so you're I'm, coming I'm, into the new season strong. Yeah, I'm all ready to go. Uh, so that'll that'll be at Get 7 at p.m. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday, West Coast time. Uh, for both those shows thursday we are going to be doing the shipwreck show live recording right here at twitch.tv forward slash good kraken show yeah that's right that's the show that you guys want to be here for i can guarantee that me some shipwreck show. it's 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 a wild time it's always different ernell's always talking about butts and we're always talking about food <laughs> all true all true things yep. all yep. true and that'll all be at 7 things. p.m West Coast, Best Coast time, 10 p.m. East Coast, I guess, Beast Coast time. I'll give you guys some love out there. There you go. Uh, I got a lot of friends out there. I've heard I've heard uh, Xander say that before. I know, but it's not, you know, Beast is still not the best. So I just no, want to say that. Mm. I just want to say that. Friday, we are doing a splash damage episode and we are going to be streaming Rumbleverse. Um, I believe that's going to be Garrick and Ernell. Um, we'll yeah, we'll yeah. let you know on the roster for that that night. Yeah, er- Ernell and I will be. Uh, we should be your resident gamers uh, for for that easing for evening next easing. Week. Yep. Uh, that should that should be an interesting one because it's like it's literally like pro. It's it's a pro wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. battle royale. <laughs> I don't even like really watch or care for wrestling at all in the IRL. So like. The game seems Either, like it can but be like, fun, it seems like it's but, fun, but it like it's it's really hard to pique my interest because I've always been like, that's not real wrestling. It's not real wrestling. <laughs> that's not wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> so that will also be at 7 p.m. West Coast time, yeah. 10 p.m. Eastern. Definitely come in, check it out, have a blast, see what the game's about or tell these guys how to play the game because we're yeah. going to suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, we're not going to be good at it. Saturday, we'll be doing another GK podcast. We'll, we will be talking about our D23 announcement predictions. This is the convention where you get all the new Marvel news, all the new Star Wars news, all the new Pixar news. It's going to be all out there. And we're probably mostly going to focus on Star Wars and Marvel just because, you know, we're nerds. And that's what we like to talk mm-hmm, about. Mm-hmm. Please it's let us know. That. What you guys think about the current state of the DCEU and where you would like it to see where it goes here in the comments below or come over to our discord and chat with us and let us know what you think about it. But for now, this has been the Good Kraken podcast, your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news, reviews and discussions that you wanted to hear live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 12 p.m. West Coast, best coast time right here at twitch.tv forward slash good kraken show if you're riding this wave you can head on over to our discord where you can submit questions and topics to the show get exclusive content and have early access before they go live on podcast and video services across the digital sea Yerg. 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 You can also support us by going to our YouTube channel, clicking that beautiful bell and big red button, or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken Explanation Point and leaving a review there. We got to get going, but until next time, y'all have a good day. Figure it out, DC. Yeah, yeah, figure Figure it it out, out. DC. Don't have a good day till you do, actually. I'll figure it out for you. Mm. Yeah, give us money. We'll, We'll figure it out.